Our service begins at the top of page two. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Worship his majesty, up to Jesus, the glory of everything. Majesty, even in poverty, for his throne, Set us free, O oh God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us be seated to listen to the reading from Isaiah. Reading from the book of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in. Who brings princes to naught, makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. But he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see, created these. He who brings out their hosts and numbers then, calling them all by name, because he is in strength, in mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is, de is and my right is dis disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, and the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He lives, he gives power to the faint, he strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary. The young will fall exhausted. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, not up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Portions of Psalm 147 will now be read alternating by verses between men and women. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the holy, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the heart. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. 
He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. And for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of horse. He has no pleasure in the command. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. For the Lord is my sanctuary, yes, he will be. Joy is seen from the spring, the sons of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Thanks to the Lord, and all of his name. It is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my joy, and he will be such a savior. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, very dark. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the war is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will not save. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Although I'm sure most of you at home are already seated, uh, <laughs> but that's the direction is for the folks who are here. The theme of Epiphany is God's manifestation in Jesus Christ. That's literally what the whole season is about. From the baby in a manger, the visit of the distinguished Eastern visitors, to now experiencing the word made flesh living out his ministry, which he begins on this day, at least in our lessons. Jesus is being revealed to those he encounters. His baptism, the dove and the voice from above, various miracles, calling the disciples as he walks along the Sea of Galilee, teaching in the synagogue with authority. God has been self-revelatory, though, from the very beginning. From Genesis 1, in the beginning, when God created humankind in his own image. Today's lections or readings 
reveal something of that divine image. Who God is before, during, and after Jesus' earthly life. Who brings princes to naught, makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. When he blows upon them and they wither and the, temp the tempest carries them off like stubble. This is a powerful God. The psalmist, in the portion that we read of Psalm 147, offers us uh, words of comfort to God's people. Because God can do all kinds of things. I comfort people and count all the stars and heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. The Lord lifts up the lowly and casts the wicked to the ground. So whenever you fall, think about it. Maybe that's not a good image. The psalmist also offers advice to other followers. Covers the heavens with clouds, he says of God, and prepares them for the rain. Makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds for the young ravens when they cry. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always been bothered from early days, talking about a God who wants us to fear him. You know, fear is, it should be reserved for the monsters that live under the bed, or the ones who are in the closet, and that's why you have to always close the closet doors fully each night before you go to sleep. But it's a different kind of fear. It's the meaning of fear that is more like the meaning of awe, that we are in awe of God. We are so in awe of God that we tremble in God's presence because his greatness is too much for us. In fact, in the New Testament, the uh, angel Gabriel says to Mary, do not be afraid, Mary. You are favored by God. You will conceive and bear a son whom you will name Jesus. Mary says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, the greatness that is so great that I am in awe of him. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. There are promises made from heaven, do not be afraid, and other responses to the experience of the promise on earth. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus, Simon, and Andrew, and others are, have finished their journey around the Sea of Galilee, and they are in a small town where Simon lives. And in his house, in Simon's house, is his mother-in-law. The, uh, One for me. Um, what we're chuckling about is Sheila got a call and she scampered off and then took the call in a little alcove so that we could hear everything that she was saying. <laughs> At least I could. Some have said that the idea of Simon's mother-in-law being healed was so that she could serve them, which I think is a little sexist. More than a little sexist, a lot sexist. I don't believe she was healed so that she could serve them. I think she was healed because she was sick. Just like the others who came from the town all around to gather at Simon's house for healing for themselves. <clears throat> and that same convergence of heavenly and earthly came about in God through his son Jesus healing not only Simon's mother-in-law, but kind of a healing frenzy as all who were possessed or, or sick came 
to receive that touch and that healing. And Jesus says about it when queried, that is what I came out to do. It's a continuance of the revelation of God that was begun in Epiphany or in, at Christmas and is now continuing. God's son is here for the benefit of God's people. In Eucharistic prayer B, which we used in Advent, and I won't use again probably until the next Advent, it says, we give thanks to you, God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you made him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error, into truth, out of sin, into righteousness, out of death into life. We experience God in different ways. And we experience God on a regular basis, and at least I don't always recognize it. I'll give you an example. On Friday, which is 72 hours before we are supposed to get on an airplane to go to Hawaii, which is one of the safest places to go because they have a very strict uh, idea of how you can get there. You can't get there unless you've had a test 72 hours or less before you go. And there are only certain places and certain tests that they um, allow. And the places that offer these tests always give you a, uh, I guess it's, what is it called in legal terms? Uh, uh, proviso that says these tests may not be ready for three or four days and you say but they have to be ready in less than three days or I can't get on the plane and they just say that's the way it goes we can't we can't uh, control how quickly they get done so you go in with a little bit of fear and trepidation and you get your test and one of you of the two of you that would be she and me and this is a kind of a um, secondary award given to Sheila for the four trips that we have can had canceled in 2020 and up to now in 21. And the fact that her birthday is today and we're here at church and, and then we go home and do the, the uh, annual meeting. And then we have a vestry meeting afterwards. So it's really not much of a birthday for her. And so, because uh, she has to be the tech for all those things. So her plan is to go to Hawaii for a week. And uh, one of you, when you get to the, uh, to the drive through at Walgreens, has put down the wrong birthday on the uh, uh, information that you have to fill out ahead of time on your um, computer, and one of you has said instead of 12, 15, 1947, 12, 19, 1947. At least I didn't put, I mean, at least that person didn't put 1547. And the tech looks at you and says, Well, I can give you the test, but they probably won't accept it because it doesn't have the same birthday as your identification. It was just a mistake, can't we? No, nope. once it's in, it's in. So one of us is a little smug and takes her test. And the other one of us is a little bit defeated and takes his test. We put them in, I guess you all have done these things, but you put them in the little vial and uh, hand them back and you leave. And then I said, honey, we gotta find another place for me to take a test. And we were not able to find another one at Walgreens because they're known for getting the test back pretty rapidly. So we went to CVS. I got uh, a test that afternoon at CVS. So maybe there's a chance that I'll get that test back and her test will be fine. We'll be able to go. Well, yesterday I got my results from, from Walgreens. It's said inconclusive. 
Now, I had no idea if that was inconclusive because some dumb person put down my information incorrectly. And even though it was me, I was still feeling like it must have been Sheila's fault. Maybe she rushed me or something, you know? I mean, I don't know. Uh, and uh, then Sheila, and so Sheila just kind of smugly says, mm -hmm. and then I, she gets hers, and hers is inconclusive. It's also. Apparently, we didn't stick the swab far enough up. Didn't get enough good material. Up. So I'm feeling then a little smug because I've got a secondary test at CVS. And so she says, well, I've got to get another test now too, but hers is on a different day, obviously. So anyway, this morning, just before uh, we left home to come up, I got my response from CVS from the test I took on Friday and I passed. I am negative. Now, Sheila is concerned that she won't get her test back until tomorrow. And we get on the plane, if we get on the plane, at around seven o'clock in the morning. So this is gonna be a chance. You gotta get on the plane with your negative test results. So Sheila has been kind of doing all she can to find out what we can do to get her test back. Or if I need to go tomorrow and she'll come on Tuesday, or because if I wait until Tuesday to go, it'll be more than 72 hours. So it will be outside the window. What I think is that somehow, some way it will work out. It may not work out the way we intended, but it will work out. Somehow, some way we'll either get there or we won't. And if we don't, we probably don't need to be there. And if we do, then maybe we do need to be there. Although we'll save a few dollars if we don't end up going. And I promised her a nice dinner out at Wiener Schnitzel and uh, to make up for anything that we might miss in the way. Anyway, could you guys sing uh, the verse from the song that we sang just a moment ago? Surely, <laughs> or, or, uh, I don't remember it well enough. Sure, but I, it is God who saves me. Yes, I was listening to it just before the sermon. I was thinking, I could just say that we could be done without a sermon because <laughs> this is what the sermon is saying. Jesus went through Galilee, preaching and healing, and showing compassion to those in need. As God comes, no less today, to those for whom we pray, let us offer our prayers to God, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator of all, look with favor upon the peoples of the world. In your mercy, give to all people the necessities of a dignified life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ruler of creation, instill wisdom and understanding among the peoples of nations. Guide them into the ways of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the church, gather us all into one holy communion. Give us the courage to look to you alone as the source of our unity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Great physician. Bring healing to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those we know and love, and for those known only to you. Inspire us to care for your gifts of healthy bodies and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of the living Christ, fill us with expectations and eager longing for the coming of that day when no one will suffer 
but when all will be gathered together in heavenly joy and eternal prosperity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please add your own intercessions here. Continued healing. For continued healing for Ken. Ken. And he. Amen. 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 For Ray. Amen. 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 A continued healing for Chris, Sarah. And Sarah's parents. Amen. Amen. Cummins family and baby C. Amen. 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 Beth and Dick. Amen. Amen. This we ask, O oh God, in the name of Christ, who died and rose for us, and those and whose coming and glory we await. Accept our prayers and praises through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us remotely and uh, in distance offer peace to one another. Peace, peace everyone. Peace. Peace, peace, everybody. Peace. Ha ha, <laughs> camera. Oh, there's a nice. <laughs> Gail. Yeah, Gail and um, Arthur. Arthur. Um, what's his name? Charles. Is that? Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Can you see that? Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. 
Praise Him, all creatures, God, the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to God. Thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused the new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he now in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now that our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Oh, 
Turning to page 12. Eternal Father, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Do we have any birthday prayers? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Carol, what do you... Tyler's birthday? Oh my goodness. Fantastic. Okay. John, you have something? Your birthday on the 12th. You and uh, Honest Abe. Yeah. Fantastic. I'd like to see you in the top hat. Daughter in laws, Amy.
but Amy is on the 11th. Okay, and anyone else you can think of? Me. <laughs> My birthday is on the 12th. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can hear me. I heard you. Leanne. Yes, we can. Who's on the 12th? Oh, Leanne. Leanne. Hello. I have no clue. Okay. <laughs> um, the uh, we'll say the birthday prayer. I didn't hear any anniversaries. There's no traveling. Oh, where are you headed? Big Bear. Big Bear. That's probably probably pretty safe. Oh no no no! They just had a big article about the. Uh, they uh, the uh, COVID coming out with that uh, single. How do they call that? Oh, the uh, one. okay. The, new, the variation. The variation. Great. Okay. <laughs> Super. We're not going out of it. We'll we'll <laughs> pray for those who may or may not be traveling uh, <laughs> that they will be safe. Gracious God, be with Rebecca and Arthur as they travel to Big Bear. Keep them safe. Help them to uh, distance and wear masks and stay away from people who might be willing to give them something that they wouldn't enjoy. Um, uh, keep them safe on the roads and, and on the slopes. We also ask your blessing upon those who are trying to get to Hawaii. And uh, if it be your will, help them go and be safe. And if it not be that will, then help them stay here and enjoy their their uh, wonderful celebratory dinner at Jerwiner Schnitzel. <laughs> Amen. She left. Uh, Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do want to remind you that... Uh, uh, the annual meeting is today. It begins at noon. It's on Zoom. We have to have at least 20 of us uh, present to start the meeting and to conduct the business. It'll be uh, the same agenda as all other annual meetings with one exception. Arthur will not be cooking lunch for us today. Uh, that's a wonderful tradition that was here when I got here. And, and I thought, you're kidding. This man's willing to cook lunch every single annual meeting. And uh, he's done that. And I had some great variations. I think we've had paninis. Oh, yeah. It started off with, with hot dogs, right? Yeah, we added to it chili dogs. Chili dogs, <laughs> panini dogs. I mean, it's been all kinds of stuff. And uh, in fact, there is uh, more tuna in Arthur's chili dogs than there is in uh, the tuna at Subway. That's right. So, okay. I'll probably get sued for that, but uh, here we go. We will be saying goodbye to three excellent vestry members, Kathy Wood, Marty Van Houten, and, and then Paul Harris. He's part of the three. They have done an outstanding job. This has not been the easiest year to be a vestry. And, uh, all of those who have served and who continue to serve have done an excellent job. Uh, we have three candidates for vestry for this coming year. Let's see if I can remember them. Uh, Marty, help me if I forget someone. We've got uh, that one person and then there are two others. Uh, let's see, Bonnie Lance, Michael McCormick, and- Nelson. 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 There's Nelson. Hey. You came into church and sat over here and then you moved. Wow. That's challenging for me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then we have three candidates for the two delegate positions for uh, dio diocesan convention. And Marty, can you remember who they are? Yes, there's myself. There's um, Marsha Pick 
And Mary Manesis. And Mary Manesis. Okay. So all three of those will run for two positions. We'll be voting by something called polling on uh, on the Zoom. And Sheila and I have tested it exhaustively. And uh, we think we can make it work. We're sure hoping so. And uh, we will give it a shot. So Ash Wednesday is the 17th. We are going to send through the mail to those who desire it very small portions, and I'll show you the size portion, uh, Pam, after the service today, uh, of ashes from previous Ash Wednesdays that we've saved. We didn't give out any palm crosses this last year, so we're not gonna take any back in, but it's the burning of the palm crosses and they're uh, mashed up in a, a, a mortar and pestle, uh, John Stevens, uh, the mad scientist, and then Normally, we would put them on people's foreheads at a service here on Ash Wednesday. We will have a service here live outside at noon on the 17th of February, but uh, the clergy cannot impose ashes on people's heads. It's a touch that's not allowed at this point. So we will send ashes to those who will be at home and can't come in live for the service. And we will give a small baggie, and I mean very small, uh, which were found by Diana, and uh, we'll be using them. And uh, we'll send them through the mail or hold on to them here for people and give them out. And you can put your own uh, address for And before this coming Thursday, let us know here at church that uh, send an email or place a phone call to Cheryl, let her know that you'd like them and they will be packaged and sent to you. The uh, other things for Lent, the booklets and the study are all um, being sent out. And I mean, not sent out, they're, they're gonna be here. You gotta pick them up You pick them up today or you can pick them up next Sunday. You can pick them up on Ash Wednesday. And if you can't come to service, they are here in the office. The office is open from nine to three each day with little time, uh, 12 to one for lunch for Cheryl. Usually I'm here for that, but I won't, maybe won't be here this week to do that. But uh, come by, call Cheryl, she'll bring them out to you. And uh, there'll be an almost, well, there'll be a touchless uh, delivery of those. So any questions? Paul? To figure out what to do when there's two people looking on the same thing. Here. Yes, we will have uh, a second ballot. In other words, if there are two of you, if Mike and Mary both want to vote for somebody or not vote for somebody, um, then uh, we would let you vote twice from your household and uh, so that everybody's vote counts. Okay. Nothing else we'll get done because we've got to drive home and uh, set up or uh, get ready with a Zoom call. So let's sing the closing hymn, which I think is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.